Hello and welcome to our afternoon newscast for this Tuesday, February 20th here in South Korea. Today we begin with live coverage of the year's ninth cabinet meeting presided over by President Yoon seok yeol Now this latest meeting comes amid much concern over a potential medical shutdown as doctors in training here in capital Seoul resign en masse in protest of government plans to raise the medical school admissions quota by 2,000 to, to the 5,000 level, that is, from the current 3,000 level starting next year. That would be 2025. Now, President Yoon is expected to address these concerns and more during today's cabinet meeting. In fact, on the broader health front, is also expected to touch upon the country's low birth rate, which stands at 0 0.7 based on findings for the year 2022. The birth rate for last year, that is 2023, will be shared this year, but most observers believe the rate will be lower at 0 0.6. The, accordingly, President Yoon will highlight the need for a tangible policies to encourage childbirth and to better support child rearing. And within these efforts in support of families are policies for working parents and for education. I understand the cabinet is about the cabinet meeting that is about to commence and we cut live to the venue of that meeting now. At ease. Please take your seats. <clears throat> we will begin the cabinet meeting. In protest of the hike in medical school enrollment quota, resident doctors have tendered their resignations en masse and medical students have taken leave of absence collectively. This is really unfortunate. Until now, the government has met with the doctors' organizations 28 times, explaining the inevitability of medical reform. The government has proposed many things like reducing judicial risks for doctors, strengthening the compensation system by increasing the number of policies for local essential medical care, and supporting investment in local medical institutions. Nevertheless, last week, the Amos resignation letter has been submitted, and as a result, Cases where surgeries have been <coughs> delayed or cancer patients cannot be treated has happened. The lives and health of the Korean people are at stake, and doctors and medical students are the future of health care, and they should not take such actions that put the public at risk. Protecting the lives and safety of our citizens is one of the most fundamental constitutional responsibilities of government and also the actual meaning of the national security and public safety. To this end, the state must manage health care resources efficiently to protect the lives and health of our people. Doctors, just like soldiers and police officers, even though they are not public officials, they should not be collectively denying their duty to care and take treatment to treat the patients. The need for health care reform has been recognized for a long period of time. In July 2022, a nurse at one of the big five hospitals in Seoul collapsed while working and died because no doctors were available to operate on her. The essential health care of the Republic of Korea has been highlighted by this incident. It is in dire situation. We are constantly faced with reality that there has been massive outflow of health care workers to non-essential and leaving a huge void in essential care. 
As such, the health care reform is urgently needed, but still, the past governments had not addressed this issue for nearly 30 years. The demand for health care is growing at a rapid pace, but supply it cannot keep up the speed of the demand. In particular, the workforce for essential health care has shrunk even more, and as a result, the local essential care has collapsed. The local Health care collapse means that the health and safety of the people living in the local areas is at risk. But still, for the last 27 years, the government has failed to increase the number of medical students schools by a single one. In fact, in si since 2006, medical school student quota have been reduced, reduce, producing a cumulative total of less than 7,000 doctors. And we know that we cannot solve the collapse of essential care problem with the situation. However, it is clear that more doctors are necessary for preventing the collapse of essential health care. The government so far has tried to recruit more doctors many times, but we have repeated failure over the last several decades. Now, we have reached a tipping point where failure can no longer be an option. Some have argued that 2,000 seat increase is too much and that some are raising conspiracy theories, but this is not enough to solve the problem that has been lingering over 30 years and <clears throat> prepare our country for the future. The 2,000 seats itself is literally the minimum. Even if we increase the number of medical school quota ne from next year, the first medical school graduates will be coming out in 2031, and it will take at least 10 years for specialists to be trained and it will be 2035 when we are reaching the 2,000 doctors <coughs> that are needed. Therefore, the hike in medical school enroll, uh, enrollment quota can no longer be delayed. The argument that the quality of medical education will fall is also incorrect. Seoul National University's medical school currently has 135 students as quota, but compared to 1983, which is three decades ago, it was 260 back then. For the last four decades, the, de the demand for medical care has exploded, but the, the number of medical schools and seats has been cut in half. And some medical schools in the region, like Gyeongbuk National University and Cheonnam National University, Busan National University, the situation is also similar. On the contrary, the skills and competence made Korean healthcare one of the best in the world. And the shortage of doctors uh, trained when enrollment was higher. The, the government will not be reluctant to invest in more medical education whenever it is necessary. Moreover, the expansion of medical schools is a key component to complete regional essential health care system. The government will continue to push for health care reform that saves the lives of the people living in the regions. And we are going to disseminate the best cases of regional uh, hospitals so that uh, the uh, concentration to Seoul area would uh, be disseminated evenly to the regions. And in Korea, we have the best medical capabilities uh, which are the best in the world, and we are going to let this be known by everyone in the future. 
Nevertheless, the reality of healthcare services that the patients and Korean people face in their regional areas is very disappointing, to say the least. The people of healthcare realm, I ask you to join us in reforming the medical health care so that it can no longer be delayed. We will reward local essential and critical care and reduce judicial risks so that you can practice with confidence. Moreover, wherever you're living around the country, you can be, get, you can be treated appropriately so that the fair access to health care for the patients will be guaranteed. Expanding the medical school enrollment quota is also vital to prepare the biomedical scientists and healthcare entrepreneurs for the advanced biohealth care industry. This is a strategic industry for our nation's future. This is a sector that requires access to clinically experienced physicians and creates tremendous high paying, high quality jobs, and it is important future growth engine for our country. In just a few days, the total Fertility rate for 2023 will be announced. The low birth rate of Korea will be in a dire situation, and we will be able to acknowledge this with statistics. The low birth rate problem, we do not have a resolution that will work at once. However, we all know the history has actually shown us that the problem cannot be solved by reactive measures alone. So we have to thoroughly analyze the root cause of the declining birth rate, take a stock at the many policies that is in place and restructure them whenever it's necessary. At the moment, the young people are at an insecure situation in bringing up children, employment, and housing. No policy will be effective unless it is a tangible and palpable one. The government will accelerate structural reforms in labor, education, and other areas to reduce unnecessary competition. We will identify continuously the policies that directly benefit the mothers and fathers and pursue them unwaveringly. We will do our utmost to develop the regional areas in a balanced manner. In order for the government's measure to have a greater impact, it's crucial for the companies in particular to join hands. Recently, there were many policies by private sectors and companies uh, and to that they are uh, putting efforts to overcome the declining birth rate, and I'm very grateful and pleased to know so. It is very encouraging to see people in our society to come together to solve these societal challenges. The government will not just sit idly. We will quickly put in place various support measures, including tax incentives, to future revitalize corporate efforts. Last week, I appointed the new vice chairman of the Low Birth Rate and Aging Society Committee, and I hope this committee will serve as a control tower for the declining birth rate. This vice chairman will be implemented as a regular committee member, and the, the uh, protocol for this person will be also escalated, and so and that person will be able to join this cabinet meeting in the future. Each ministries are encouraged to discuss this birth rate fall issue in detail, and promptly implement policies in, the, in this regard. Since last week, we have been holding the public discussions with the people on livelihood. After the Lunar New Year holiday, I went to Busan and announced the three packages for the local era so that 
We can have more policies, and we discussed about the concrete measures to open a local era that could be palpable by the people. On Friday last week, I went to Jejeon to explain how to foster talented human resources and innovative research institutes to make Korea the first mover in advanced science and technology. We also discussed the future of Daejeon, which is the science capital of Korea. When I go to the field, I learn the things that you don't know from your office, and you can see uh, for yourself what are the challenges. And I know and I realize that there are so many voices that the government needs to listen to. Throughout this year, we will continue to hold such discussion sessions to break down the barriers between the ministries and hold ministerial reports and discussions centered on the issues of the livelihoods. Whenever and wherever I could hear the people's voice firsthand, I will visit that place. I will listen to the voices of the people and meet the people at the field with solutions. We will create policies that respond to the field and quickly change the lives of the people. Together with the cabinet members and the Ministry officials, we will go uh, into the fields and deep dive into the fields <coughs> so that we could solve the problems on the field. It's March almost, and the new semester will begin, and outdoor activities will be on a rise. However, whenever spring comes, uh, the fine dust issue arises, so some people say that it's not always welcomed. In particular, the atmosphere is expected to be stagnant due to El Nino and other weather conditions. From last December, seasonal controls have been placed to reduce the PM emissions from cars and factories, but we need to be prepared more. As the weather warms up and heating demand drops, we uh, would look into ways to reduce coal fire power generation further and how to manage dust from construction sites. So from such little Parts. We should take our actions and see if we have any room for enhancements. In particular, attention should be paid to indoor dust control and so that we can and we will be able to make the people more assured that the ministries are taking their actions. Thank you. 이 공지로 진행되어